We're here at the home of Tom and Linda Schollenbarger. And Tom, you got some exciting things going on today. You're having your windows replaced. Yes, we're excited. Tom, what really precipitated you having your windows replaced? Well, mainly because uh, the windows over here were not real efficient. Uh, they we had some leaks and uh, the bay window here, you couldn't crank out the windows. And so we decided it was time for a change. And you were noticing drafts? Yes, one of the bedroom windows, we moved our bed because the draft was so bad in the evenings when we were trying to sleep, it was cold in the winter time. That's not good. No, it isn't. What types of windows did you decide on in the end? Well, we decided on the double pane with the argon gas, and uh, of course the bay window here, the rest of them are double hung. This is great, and I think this is gonna give you and your wife years and years of enjoyment. I certainly hope so. A lot more efficient, because you said the old, the old style, the cranks, not only would crank, but they'd crank and fall out, is that it? Right, the crank would fall out, so then you had to go outside to put it back in to close the window. No, no more of that, Tom, no more of that, all right? Yes, I'm glad. Thanks so much for allowing us into your house today. We're glad to have you. Joining us is Jaron Voss, an installation expert with the Pella Corporation. And Jaron, we're here at a house where the windows are being installed. And, and windows are a common place for energy loss. Let's talk about some of the more common issues with windows. Well, heat is always trying to find a balance. So in the winter, your warm inside air is trying to escape to the outside. And in the summer, the warm outside air is trying to get in and make your air conditioner work harder. Well, windows are an important part of preventing that heat loss, as well as the rest of the walls, the insulation, and the interface between the window and the wall. Now we're here today at a home where they're getting replacement windows. What are the first things that you consider um, to ensure proper installation? Well, one of the first things I look for is the frame to sash reveal. Then that's the space between the frame and the sash. And if you can make sure that that is even around the entire perimeter of the window, that would tell you that the window has been installed plumb level and square. We want to have the window downsized in the opening about a quarter of an inch on all sides so that we can fit a proper sealant on the exterior which will prevent any water infiltration and a low expansion foam on the interior that will help insulate the window and the interface between the window and the wall. Now what are the differences between an installation in a house like this that already exists and new construction? Well in new construction we can size the window to fit the opening and all of the surrounding materials are new. In replacement, we have to size the window to fit in the existing opening and make sure that the trim, both at the interior and exterior, interfaces with the siding and the interior materials to make sure that you have a seamless look. Now, as we look back here, as they install it, you know, some homes, again, have a wall that looks, it's just like a windows, a series of windows, okay? Is that tough to keep that in terms of maximum energy efficiency? Today's energy efficient windows are ranging from R3 to R5 or so, and the wall in a typical home is R13 to R19. So windows are less energy efficient than the wall. However, there can be benefits to having the right kind of window placed in the home. For example, since we're in the Northern Hemisphere, a south facing window can gain heat in the winter on a sunny day and actually prevent your furnace from running. So how can we get the most out of our energy efficient windows? Well, we wanna make sure we have a well constructed window with energy efficient features. These windows are dual pane, with an argon gas fill and a low E coating. So they will really do a good job helping prevent that energy loss. I would imagine that uh, those special features add up and cost a lot more than traditional windows. Actually, those energy efficient features are really standard now. And with Energy Star, there's tax incentives uh, to purchase those energy efficient windows. And if you'd like more information about how high efficiency windows can help save you money, visit our website at powerhousetv.com. So we're inside the Pella factory here at the Pella Corporation talking with Jen Veenstra. And Jen, we can see the latest technology behind us. Tell us what's new. So Pella actually has released a line of sensing products and shading products called Instinctive. Um, it's really just a way to enhance our windows and doors. Okay, tell us how it works. Yeah, our sensing products actually work. They can detect unlocked or open and closed. Um, we have a couple different solutions. We actually have one that's an external retrofittable, so it can fit on any existing window or door. Um, or later this summer, we'll actually have an in integrated solution. So as I open up the lock, it's actually going to detect that my window is now in the open I state. heard it. <laughs> yeah. And then as I open this up, that's when my second sensor would let me know that my window is in an open state. So very good for energy efficiency. Oh, that's great. Now, this type of window, I remember researching Pella in the past, 
And this is this technology has been around for a little while, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Pella was one of the first people to actually have between the glass blinds and shades. And what Instinctive does is just take that manual shade and makes it motorized now. So I can actually, with a push of a button, I can control, control the lighting in my home. Wow, this is great technology. And one of the great things about our um, in-between glass blinds and shades is that we actually have um, a solar panel in the back of our battery pack, so it's going to help trickle charge that battery and give that battery ex extended battery life. And it does actually qualify for the 2000, up to 2019 for the solar tax credit. This is really cool technology, but how is this going to help us or change us in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, so really it's all about that efficiency. So you could um, you can control your shades using maybe a home automation system and set up schedules. So if you wanted your shades to go up at seven in the morning um, and in the winter and get that warm sun in um, during the day, or maybe you want them to go down in the summertime and keep that sun, those sun rays out, that'd be a great way to help control your energy efficiency. Let's say that there are viewers out there who are interested in the technology, but they may not be able to finance the entire entire package and all of its capabilities. So where would you recommend that they start? Um, I would probably recommend starting with our sensing solutions. So they would start with an instinctive bridge. It's going to do the communication for the system. It's going to talk to the sensor and then to your status indicator or your home automation system letting you know if your windows and doors are open or closed or are locked or unlocked. And if they have specific needs, like say they have children in the house, would there be certain things that they might want to focus yes, on? Yes, I always recommend if you have a door that your children are going in and out of and it gets left open um, quite frequently, um, even one sensor, um, the bridge and a status indicator will, will start you out with a basic system. Okay, so the bridge is really the component that you need to get started and then you can add from there. Exactly, so the sensing solutions be great for someone that's maybe an apartment dweller um, and then later down the road as they're purchasing their first home and grow or starting to grow their um, product line, um, it can grow with them as well. Thanks, Jen. This is great information. If you'd like more details about new trends in window technology, go to our website at powerhousetv.com. Welcome back to Powerhouse. The art of making windows dates back centuries, from ornate shapes and sizes to intricate stained glass. Today we're here at the Pella Corporation and we're gonna meet with Brad Jungling, Director of Operations. Brad, great to meet you. Welcome to Pella Corporation. It's, it's our pleasure to be here and it's an exciting day because I know we're gonna go kind of behind the scenes to see how windows are constructed. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about what we're gonna to see today. Yeah, we're gonna start from the very beginning of the process. What we're making here is wood clad windows and doors. And we're gonna start at the beginning where we make that first cut into lumber all the way through assembling a window custom made for a homeowner. Where are we going to begin? What are we uh, beginning? We're going to begin in the ripsaw, which is where we make that first cut into the lumber. Tell us a little bit what's going on at the ripsaw. What are they doing? Yeah, our team member in the ripsaw, he's, he's an expert. He's been doing this a long time. He's setting up the saw by putting laser lines. He's moving laser lines, and that's telling where to cut the material. He's trying to get the best yield he can while satisfying the customer demand. Here on Powerhouse, we're talking about energy efficiency. I mean, that's really priority one for Pella Corporation. It is. We set up our whole quality system here to make sure that our team members are set up for success and they can produce the product uh, that is going to be energy efficient for the consumer. Our products that we build here are Energy Star rated, so that's independently tested and verified, which it gives, uh, it gives peace of mind to the consumer. Uh, but we're making sure that we're meeting those standards on every cycle. So Brad, what's taking place right here? Yeah, right here we're taking the material that we just ripped, and now we're chopping it into the part numbers, the lengths that we need for our processes downstream. And again, very specific customized window, right? Yeah, everything that you see here is automatically being sorted by size, and it's to customer demand. So the material that we see here is going to be produced into a window that's already sold for a homeowner's home. Now as I look here, you, I also see some that maybe aren't up to, up to standard, right? Yeah, you see some defects there. So these team members are trained that some defects are acceptable because we're gonna, we're gonna cut those out further on down the stream in the process. So, All a part of our quality system that we have throughout the process. We're in the final assembly line here, so this is where it's all gonna come together and we're making a window. Talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing down the line. Here. Yeah, what we'll see here is we'll see the, the lumber that we saw getting ripped and chopped. That's now made into profile parts. We'll see insulated glass. We'll see aluminum cladding. And it's all coming together to produce the final product here. And then the glass comes in here. That comes in 
with the argon already, everything's there, right? Yeah, on this line, we buy the insulated glass, and the argon's already in there. It's made into the insulated glass sandwich. Now, it's fascinating because everybody has specific jobs along this line. They do, yeah. Everyone's trained to do three to four different jobs, and then they rotate. And it's very important that we do the same sequence of steps every time. So, so our team members are all certified in what they're doing. Again, that's a part of the quality, making sure, again, that energy efficiency built into the window. Right, that's all part of our quality system to make sure that our consumer gets an energy efficient window. Well, Brad, this, this has been fascinating to see the whole process of construction, but now it needs to get tested, right? Yeah, we're gonna go see Dan Parrish in the test lab. He's gonna show us how that works. All right, that's great. Okay. This is Dan Parrish, and we're in the Design Assurance Lab, right? Welcome. Tell us what, what you're working on or what you try to accomplish here, Dan. So what happens in the Design Assurance Lab is we will bring products that are new designs, and we will test every aspect of them, whether it be wind and rain, hurricanes, all the way to thermal performance like we're going to talk about today. Okay, now we're looking at, this would be inside the home, right? So we're looking, this would be looking out the windows, and you've got a couple examples here. Correct. So we are inside the home on a cold winter day. It's 8 below Fahrenheit on the outside today. And what you see is a window here with condensation on the top and quite clear on the bottom. Uh, the difference between these two is that this one has a different type of glass than this one does. These are both two pane windows. Um, this one would be just clear, clear insulated glass with argon gas in the middle. The bottom one would be uh, clear with a low E coating and argon gas. And you can really see the drastic difference that that low E coating makes. A lot of condensation up here and just a little bit down here, yep. right? And then that gets demonstrated right here. So on the infrared image in this window, you can really see where your heat loss is happening in the home. Uh, if you have just clear windows, and this would look even darker on a single pane window, you'd see a lot of heat transfer going through that uh, where the low E coating blocks that radiation. And it benefits you in the summertime and also in the winter because it will reflect that heat back inside the home in the winter or reflect it on the outside in the summer. So for the homeowner, Dan, I mean, that really, they, they gotta make a decision on, uh, on the, uh, putting that, that coating, depending upon south side, north side, some decisions to make there. Correct, yep, so you wanna pick the right window for the right side of your house and the right uh, climate in which you live in. Okay, now I know this is just one, one portion. You've got some other tests we can take, uh, labs to take a look at? Yeah, let's go take a look at those tests. All right. So Dan, what happens in this area? This is a solar stress test, and essentially what we're doing is we're emitting infrared radiation on the product. Uh, it's gonna be 180 degree Fahrenheit temperature with this infrared oven that I have behind me. Uh, it's gonna project that radiation on the product and just ensure that any new product design that we have is not gonna um, distort or have any adverse effects with that heat. So again, making sure that, that energy efficiency is with that product. Correct. Okay. So you've got another test lab we can take Yeah, a let's look go at? take a look. All right. So Dan, what's going on in this test lab? So this is the frost condensation test. Right now we're standing on the inside of the home. So this is the inside of the product here. And we're looking out. Outside is gonna be cold conditions. We're gonna test for driving wind and really cold temperatures. We can get down to 30 below Fahrenheit on that side and produce a 30 mile an hour wind essentially. So you can, you can test the glass, but you're also looking at that, that frame, that structure, right? Yep, we're looking at how well is the glass um, sealed up around the edges, how well is the sash or the door panel gonna be sealed into the frame of the window product or door product. And if that wind penetrates through, you're gonna see frost start to form because we can get it very humid in here, 60% humidity. Uh, you're gonna see that frost show up in a hurry. And again, it's all about you know the quality and testing to make sure energy efficiency with your products. Yep. Well, this has been, been fascinating, Dan. And again, thanks for sharing the whole process with us for us to learn. And if you'd like more information on how windows are built, go to our website at powerhousetv.com. Welcome back to Powerhouse. Any opening in your wall reduces the overall efficiency of the wall structure. That's where energy escapes the easiest all year round. Join us now is Matthew Hakeman of the Pella Corporation. He's a product specialist. And Matthew, let's talk about new windows and what we need to be looking for when we're talking about energy efficiency in new windows. What, what should we be looking for? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing you want to look for when you think about new windows and energy efficiency is that ENERGY STAR label. 
So finding that Energy Star label, much like you might find it on other uh, appliances in the home, is a great way to point you in the direction of this is, this is where I need to start my search. Yeah, you know, a lot of different options and variations when we're looking at windows, right? Absolutely. So, and, and you really want to keep in mind the, the location of where the window is going to go for what you want to choose. So think about uh, the window over your kitchen sink. You might want to choose that to be a casement or a sliding window so it's easier to operate as opposed to a double hung. If you have a window that extends all the way up to the ceiling, it might be a little bit different to, to off, operate. So you want to make sure you're considering the location of the product in order before you make those selections. So a lot of things to keep in mind. Let's let's start with the efficiency, and and we we talk a lot about uh, two pane. Is that the sort of the the gold standard, if you will? Absolutely. So what we have here on display is a two pane uh, insulating glass window. So what we have is an is an exterior and an interior pane, and then there's a insulating gas between there, commonly called argon. What that does is that prevents the cold from coming into the home during the winter time. This is generally your gold standard and this is going to be a great product that's going to last for a long time and provide exceptional energy efficiency with an Energy Star rating. But what we're seeing is more and more homeowners like to choose a triple pane window. Uh, what this provides is, is an additional pane on the inside, provides a little bit thicker cavity for, for a little bit more energy efficiency as well. And this will, of course, just be a little bit more energy efficient to help save on those utility bills in the wintertime. Now, again, so if we move up to a three pane, uh, uh, I'm guessing it to cost us a little bit more? Yep, it will cost a little bit more, but in many parts of the country, it makes a lot of sense to, to choose this option. All right, one of the things that many of our viewers talk to us about is, is Matthew, is condensation on windows. Talk to us a little bit about uh, you know, what, what's causing condensation. Absolutely. So there's really three main areas where condensation can occur. Condensation can occur on the inside of, of the pane of glass like we have here. It can occur on the outside of the pane of the glass and it can occur between the panes of glass. So on the inside of the pane, uh, really the cause of condensation is when it's cold outside, say in the winter time it might be zero degrees and you have a hot, humid environment inside your home. So maybe you're cooking in the kitchen, or you've got a bathroom where you're just taking a hot shower. Um, condensation can occur there because you're looking for the air to touch a cool surface, much like you will have a cold glass of water on a hot summer day, you'll get condensation on the side of the glass. So the same thing can occur on the exterior of the window. When you have hot, moist air touching the cold uh, ex exterior of the glass, that will cause condensation to occur on the outside of the window as well. Finally, when you have condensation between the panes of glass, there's really nothing you can do there. So that's really a sign of what we like to call insulating glass seal failure. And that's really a sign that your window is, is in need of replace. Now, if I had a three pane window, would that be less likely to have condensation? Um, yeah, absolutely. So if you do choose the, the three pane window, it's going to increase the insulating value of that window and prevent uh, condensation from forming both on the interior and the exterior because it helps provide a, a little bit better insulating value across the panes of glass. So that would absolutely help reduce the chance of condensation forming. Anything else we need to, to pay attention to, Matthew, when we're thinking about windows for our homes? I would just say regardless of what a homeowner uh, chooses to, to do, uh, just make sure that you choose a high quality product that is energy efficient because this is something you don't want to turn around and do in, in five years again. Well, a lot of great information. Matthew, thanks for sharing that with us. Absolutely.